good evening everyone my name is Chris Cooper known as a channel guy trader and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street trading satellite office down in sunny South Florida today's date is Thursday February the 28th 2013 and here is today's after the bell market summary brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. want to first start off by taking a look to see how the indices close the session out here for the day the uh, Dow Jones was down close to 21 points here, closing the session down 20.88 points. The Nasdaq was down a little over two points, and the S&P 500 was down close to one and a half points here, closing the session down 1.31. If we take a look at the breadth, we had 3,143 issues declining, on, and we had uh, 2,966 issues advancing on the NYSE, Nasdaq, and the Amex. One thing I want to point out here before I take a look at the charts with, with you all is that uh, the breadth is kind of flip-flopping back and forth up here at these levels, which is not a good sign. If you know about breadth and the market being at key resistance levels, it's just not a good sign. Uh, on Monday, we had you know, we had a 5-to-1 ratio in favor of the Bears. Uh, yesterday, we had a 3-to-1 ratio in favor of the Bulls. On Tuesday, we had a mixed ratio. And now today, we have another mixed ratio. So that just kind of shows you how there's a lot of indecision up here at these levels. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into these charts here. The, starting off with the SPY, the SPY was down 30 cents today, down 0.20%, closing the session at 151.61. One thing to take note of here before I break down the levels to watch going into tomorrow's session is the fact that uh, if you were short the market versus yesterday's highs, you got stopped out. If you were short the market versus the big sell candle that we had on, uh, you know, on uh, Monday, you got stopped out. Therefore, only the people that aren't stopped out these positions from being short are those individuals that are short the market that have their stop at these levels. Now, are the bulls going to push this up right here to kind of stop these people out that maybe shake us down? Or are the bulls going to push this up to close above 153.30 and we move higher? These are the different scenarios that you want to have mapped out in your game plan while you're trading, you know, uh, and you're getting prepared for the next trading day or, the you know, the coming days to trade here. So, therefore, taking a look at today's action, if we break below today's lows on the S&P, on the SPY, if we break below 151.41, we're going to be looking for a move back down here towards 150. If we break back above today's highs of uh, 152.87, we're going to be looking for a move up here towards these 153.30s. Another thing to take note of is the fact that we did break above this key trend line right here. All right, that you know, it would have been nice if we were able to close above that trend line. However, we take a look what happened. We closed in the lower one-third range of today's price action which is a good sign if you're bearish and it's a cautious sign if you picked up some longs you know yesterday or today so those are the levels to watch going forward on the SPY let's go ahead and take a look at the triple Q's and you can see the triple Q's they close the session down here just about 14 cents closing the session down at 67.10 and remember that key level that we were having trouble breaking above before that they were trapping all the buyers above that level here notice how today we try to break back above 67.63, 67.50 here, and we got rejected. And now, you know, if we continue getting rejected at these levels, most likely we're going to come back down here towards 66.17 and break to that 66.17 level, looking for a move to gap fill down here at 65.15. If we break back over, I would say 67.63 or so, and we start holding above this level right here, then we could go back and test these highs of 68.25 and then try to finish uh, fighting through this little supply band that we have right here which the top of that band is around 68.60. Right, so price action in the market is pretty much choppy, especially if you're trading the Qs. I mean, this whole action right here is just chop. I mean, let's just look at this mess. This is just chop, a lot of mixed emotions up here. And, you know, it's going to crack one way or another, either to the top side for a short squeeze or to the downside with people being trapped that they've been buying this whole mess right here. And, you know, if we were if we were to crack 66.17 and then crack 65.15, Everybody that was buying above 66.17 on the queue will, in fact, be trapped to the long side, and they will have to start dumping their positions, uh, depending on how much pain they can sit through if we were to break down. So right now, the queues are really just trading in a big range. If you want to, you know, just make this a big range between 66.17 and 68.25, and you know, pretty much sideways for the year. Uh, this, this is going to take a look at the uh, IWM, the small cap Russell 2000. Let's take a look at the rut real quick, so I can see what the Russell did today. The Russell was uh, up. A little over, you know, just about a little close to a, a point and a quarter here, and was up 0.13 percent. So the Russell 2000 was actually the strongest index today on the board here. But if we go ahead and back and take a look at the IWM, which is the Russell 2000 ETF. It was up uh, 17 cents, up 0.19 percent here, closing the session at 90 dollars and 48 cents here. And you can see that 
we had some trouble trying to break above this 50% trend line that I've been showing you guys from the channel. However, if we were to break above 91 and hold, we'll be looking for a test of Monday's highs around uh, 91.53. If we break today's lows, 90.18 on the IWM, we're going to be looking for a move back down towards this key trend line around the 89.41 level. All right, and if we break that, we're going to be looking for a move back down here towards 89, and then maybe towards 88.34. We break above Monday's highs, which is 91.53. We're going to be looking for a move up towards the 92.66, which was last Tuesday's highs. Let's go and take a look at that dollar futures chart. The dollar futures has been holding up pretty well, showing some nice strength in the, in the dollar index. You can see here we close right at the highs for the week, and we close right underneath this little supply zone. So in other words, if the dollar futures were to break out tomorrow above 82, that would in fact bring some pressure to the markets, and I would think that the markets would sell off. And let's go ahead and take a look at the euro to see how the euro closed that closed today. I know the uh, FXE was pretty weak today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual euro dollar here. Euro dollar, a little reversal bar, still keeps on getting rejected below these moving averages right here. And as you, I told you guys uh, yesterday, if we break back below this 130 level, we're going to be looking for a move back inside this little range that we were tracking from the little breakout that we mentioned back here in uh, back here in January. And if that was to happen, this will act as the air pocket, and we could see a big down candle in the euro, which means we could see a big up candle in the dollar, which means we could see a big down candle in some commodity stocks and some commodities and in the equity markets. So we're going to be looking for that uh, to see if that happens maybe tomorrow or early next week. But if the euro could continue to hold above this 130 level, then we look, we'll be looking for a push back up towards this area up here where we broke down here before as a back test. Okay. So we have some we have some decent analysis to work off of. Now it's just a matter of you know waiting for it to set up pretty clean where we can manage our risk accordingly, making sure that we have our followers and our subscribers on the right side of the market when that break does happen, and we'll continue to provide some good accurate analysis for you all out there that follow us. Um, so let's go and take a look at the gold chart. I want to start off by taking a look at the at the commodities. I mean, I want to start off by taking a look at the uh, gold futures here. Gold futures got smacked down today here. And uh, so far, this is looking like a lower high on um, the gold futures here. One second, where's my arrow at here? And it's looking like a little lower high right there. So if gold continues to sell, we're going to be looking for a move back down towards these lows of 15.53. If we hold this little 15.78, 79 area on the dollar, I'm sorry, on the gold futures, we'll be looking for a push back up towards this top of the range right here at uh, 16, 14 or so. Let's go and take a look at the GLD now. Since some of you guys trade the GLD at, at home, you know a lot of the retail traders like to track the GLD, so I want to make sure I provide you guys with some levels to watch on the GLD. The GLD, you know, holding above 152 is a good sign. Breaking below 152, we're going to be looking for a move back down towards 150.81, which was last week's lows. All right, holding above 153, 152, 153, we're going to be looking for a move back up towards these 156s right here. All right, and let me go to fix this real quick. Let's go and take a look at that SLV silver. Uh, let's see, silver is back below this key trend line from the big channel that we want to see a hold above. Silver holding below 28 is not a good sign, and this looks like it wants to take out last week's lows, which could then bring it down towards, I would say, 26.50, maybe even 26. If we break back above 28, we're going to be looking for a move back up towards Friday's highs around 28.50. GDX. How about them gold miners? Gold miners are still looking weak. Gold miners look like they want to break down. As I told you guys the other day, Newmont Miner looks like the weakest gold miner, and we'll be taking a look at that here shortly. But um, gold miners, my target on the gold miners is down here towards the uh, 3465 level. So there could still be some more act, you know, some nice little downside profits to make by being short the gold miners or be, by being short any of these weak gold mining stocks, which we'll take a look at here shortly. But right now, the level you want to watch on the uh, GDX, if we break and hold below today's lows of uh, 37.22, you want to be looking for a move towards 36 and maybe towards 35 here in the short term. If we hold today's uh, lows, you want to be looking for a move possibly back up towards the top side of 39.17. You can see how the GDX is just basically trading in a nice little $2 range here or so. And let's go and take a look at some gold miners since we're looking at them right now. Newmont Mining, look, look at this one. Newmont Mining broke down today below the lows. Not a not a wide range bar, but definitely tomorrow if gold is weak, this thing can have a nice wide range bar. That's why we're going to be watching that euro dollar pretty closely um, overnight, along with the dollar futures and along with the uh, rest of the commodity sector. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at GG real quick. See what GG did. Uh, GG looks like it sold off a little bit today, and let's take a look at AEM. These are just some of the gold miners that I like to track. 
Newmont Mining, AEM, ABX, Gold Corp. We could also take a look at uh, yeah, ABX is one of the weaker ones out there as well, uh, along with Newmont Mining. I could say that you know all of them are weak, of course, but you know ABX is the weakest, and then followed by Newmont Mining, then followed by GG, and then some of those other ones out there. But ABX has a nice breakdown if it breaks below the thir the uh, thirty dollar whole level, a uh, whole number, and uh, right now you can see it's just kind of trending down slowly. All right, let's go and take a look at crude oil by taking starting off with the crude oil futures. Uh, crude oil futures they were down a little bit today. The commodities were a little bit weak today. You can see crude oil futures, you know, they opened uh, at 92.89 and they closed at 91.83. So they're down about a dollar or so from the opening price. And crude oil looks like it wants to pull back a little bit more. Hopefully that could translate to some uh, some decline in those gas prices that we're seeing at the pump. But anyways, crude oil looks like it wants to go down to this ninety dollar uh, level here to check this area that it was holding from the uh, start of January or so, or I should say the uh, last day of December. And if we break below ninety, we're going to be looking for a move down here towards a uh, eighty nine. If we hold these levels right here, we're going to be looking for a move back up towards ninety four, as that is a little short term resistance level that we have to work off of right now. And if you guys watch the USO, let's go and take a look at the USO. The USO was down thirty four cents today. One thing to take note of on the USO is that it's coming back into this little range right here. Let it mark this range for you guys. I'm going to make this a different color as well. Bear with me one second, please. And we're going to be looking for the USO to possibly fall back towards this little gap field that we have right here from the gap that I had in December. That target is 32.23. We break below that. Our target is going to be the bottom of this little range around 31.19. If we hold 33, then we're going to be looking for a move back up towards 34 from this little gap that we had right here. So we have some decent levels to work off of uh, on the USO as well. Uh, what else do I want to take a look at here? The volatility index, the VIX. The VIX was uh, closed up the session 78 cents a day here. And we're going to be looking for a move in the VIX back above 16 if we have some selling pressure tomorrow, maybe back up towards 17. Notice how we did hold the lows from uh, Monday's expansion candle though so far today and we had a nice little wick with some dip buyers coming in today to buy some volatility to protect their positions their portfolios alright so let's go talk go ahead and talk about some key stocks now um, Apple Apple closed the session down three dollars and seventeen cents uh, there's no sign of Apple showing a bottom yet continues to grind lower below these fast moving averages right here and you know me personally I think it wants to crack below this 435 level um, Amazon showed some nice strength today here, closing the session up a dollar. It it did pull off its uh, highs that it had for the day. It did pull off the over off the uh, daily highs of 267. But remember, Amazon holding above 262 is fine. But once it gets below 262 and holds below 262, you know we'll start you know we'll become a little bit more cautious on Amazon. But right now it looks like it wants to try to hold above 262. We'll see. At the same time, every time it comes down to just, towards this uh, 257 level, they buy it right up. So that's just something to take note of. Um, IBM had a nice little strong candle yesterday. I did not get a chance to see what it did today here, but it was down a dollar fifty, and just seems like it continues to hold below this key trend line that we've been tracking since back here in uh, October, November. All right, you can see it gapped up from the earnings, pulled back in, tried to break uh, back above that key trend line, and it's still having trouble. So keeping on IBM, IBM looks to trade sideways um, to lower, and definitely lower if it cracks below 196. But you know that. We'll talk about that if it gets towards those levels. Um, let's see here. What else do I want to go over here? Um, uh, J.C. Penney, they had earnings today. Company did not perform well, and they are getting smack. They got smacked down pretty um, hard today. Even though they pulled off the lows, this is a stock you want to stay away from. Uh, CRM, they had earnings after the bell, and let's go ahead and take a look to see what they're trading. They closed at 169.22. Let's go ahead and take a look to see how they're trading after hours. And the stock, you know, came up with good earnings. The stock is uh, trading at 177.23. So, you want to be watching the stock tomorrow. Definitely could have some more upside if it could hold above these uh, 178s. Looks pretty good on all time frames across the board. Uh, what else do I want to talk about here? Let's take a, take a look at the banks. The banks did show some weakness going into going into the close here. Goldman Sachs is starting to hold below this 20-day moving average and these fast moving averages. So something you have to you definitely want to keep track of. And at the same time, you can draw this little key trend line in right here. Dry a little parallel channel line here, and now you have a nice little downward channel to track on Goldman Sachs. I may have to make sure I draw that in later on tonight when I do my when I do more research. Uh, J.P. Morgan, pretty much just trading sideways up here between 47.57 and uh, 49.72. Uh, 
Bank of America BAC at the bottom of the range down here near the $11 level here. And uh, holding above 11, we can maybe look for a pushback in the middle part of the range. Breaking below 11, we're going to be looking for a pushback down towards $10 there. Um, what else? Morgan Stanley, some more banks to take a look at. Morgan Stanley having trouble breaking back above 23. Uh, Intel, take a look at some key technology stocks. Intel um, having some trouble breaking back above 21. The casinos actually sold some decent strength in the morning here. LVS. Had a nice little pop here, but still having trouble trying to break it back above 52. A lot of wick action, a lot of trap action coming here intraday. Every time it breaks above 52, that's something to take note of here. It's going to take a look at wind, see what wind did today. W-Y-N-N. -N. Uh, wind, same thing. Rallied up, uh, broke back down, closing the lows. And it's this one's having trouble breaking back above that key uh, 120 level from the range that it was trading in right here. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on guys make sure you pick your areas pick your targets uh, right make sure you're focusing on the key stocks that are in play make sure that you're managing your risk accordingly the market sentiment right now is pretty confusing a lot of mixed action across the board today we called out RRC to the long side in the room that one worked out pretty well this was a natural gas play I was, I was uh, calling this out all over stock twists all over Facebook and this one worked out pretty well you can see the buyers came in this one midday here around uh, 12 o'clock and you know I got back on the horn and made sure we got our followers in this trade once it broke above 75. Another trade that we talked about this morning was the JCPenney trade. The JCPenney trade set up for a quick sell on the open. Why? Because if you take a look at the one minute chart, it was in this nice little bearish upward channel pattern that of course you guys know I'm the channel guy trader so I know how to read these patterns with the back of my hands here and you can see here that um, had this nice little upward channel. It broke down Back test held. Once it broke below the 1760 level, we got our traders involved to the downside. We actually got our traders involved in the room around 1785, and uh, you know we rolled that down pretty nice. Some people had puts. Either way, technical pattern there that we were able that we were able to uh, provide our followers and our subscribers to the room with. And of course, if you would like to access our room, you can go to WallStreetTrading.com and sign up for the 14-day free trial, guys. A lot of good stuff coming your way our way if you follow the website and you follow our analysis and we have a lot of good things in the works here so come join us come check us out hope to see you guys tomorrow at 8:20 a.m. in the room cheers